Hey guys, it's Khalid from Fat Guy Skinny Wallet, and I'm here to make a quick video just telling you why I think it's important for you to measure, weigh, and track your food. Okay, so I've been talking a lot lately, um, and I've actually been recording a lot of videos today, and I don't know when this is going up in, in the uh, group, but I've been talking a lot lately about calories and trying to be precise with calories, not just how many we should have but also um, how many we're burning and making sure that we're in a deficit making sure our deficit is not too large just all these things about calories because that that's the important thing we I think we get caught up into so many um, fads and we get we get so far into the details that we miss the things that the basics that are on the surface that will get us to our goals you know we try to squeeze every little bit of efficiency out of something when we haven't mastered the basics so we see get back to basics here's something I was uh, thinking about today um, I measure my food uh, I, I me meaning that I usually take the serving size um, or a multiple of the serving size and use that as what I'm going to eat it's easier that way because I can look at the package see what it is um, one thing that, and, and I'll tell you this and tell you why, what measuring and weighing, I separated even though they're kind of similar. By doing that, I was, uh, my wife and I had this canned tuna that sometimes we'll buy from Costco. And, excuse me, canned chicken. Well, it says that each can is three and a half servings and it gives a um, weight for each serving. And it says each can has three and a half. So you think it's pretty uniform because it's a mold, you know, essentially that they, you know, just throw some chicken in the can. But, so I'll just put three and a half servings into the software that I use because I just use the whole can because I found that to be easier. If I was using less, then I would weigh it. Well, my wife weighs it even when she uses the entire can. So instead of having three and a half servings, she's found that each time, according to the weight, it's been more than four servings. And... When you're dealing with food, weight is what matters. It's not really the size or space, it's the weight. So when you're measuring food, remember that. That if they say a tablespoon or a teaspoon, those aren't really uniform. Because some of them will be, sometimes you can scoop and you have a heaping. Sometimes you scoop and you, you know, you scrape off the top. And I mean, that's really what they're talking about. They're not talking, they're talking about if you use a, a measure measuring cup or spoon whatever you use to measure that it's the surface is flat that's that's a true cup half cup quarter cup teaspoon tablespoon is if you have a flat surface at the top um, even so you may have more grains than others you may scoop some in and some gets left <laughs> um, like peanut butter for instance if you try to have a serving of peanut butter it peanut butter sticks on a spoon sticks in whatever you're using to measure my point is you should weigh it. So you're measuring it in that you're trying to at least eat the serving size or multiples of the serving size. And you're also looking to um, weigh it so that you can be precise knowing that the serving size is an approximation when it's given in some other form other than weight when it's given in a volume capacity. Uh, like this is a cup. Well, your cup may be different than my cup. Um, we we may just be, you know, off as far as how precise we are. So that's why you should do that, and why you should track your food. You should track everything you eat. And I really noticed this with the pictures and um, that I've been doing with Julie. And I think Julie, I know Julie mentioned this in one of her weigh-in videos, is that these pictures help us both so much because it lets us realize how often we snack. Now, for instance. I walk in, now I don't do this anymore, but I used to, I would walk in the kitchen, be a little hungry and just need something to kind of hold me over, so to speak, and just grab a little, um, little spoonful of peanut butter. Well, that spoonful of peanut butter, because I'm not, you know, flattening out the top of it or anything, it's a, it's a spoon that I'm eating with, not a serving, uh, measuring spoon. So, I'll take that, that one spoonful, it could be 200, 300 calories right there. That I did not account for because I did not eat it as part of a meal. It was something that I ate within 10 seconds and, com and it completely went in and out of my mind. And I didn't even think about it. I could walk by the refrigerator and just grab a piece of the Baby Bell cheese like that she just bought. Right there, it's a little round thing. Well, that can fit in your mouth in one, one bite. So by the time you even go to think about another thought, it's gone. 
handful of almonds. You grab it, 160 calories right there. So I just described well uh, over 500 calories that you can have throughout the day just by grabbing a quick snack and within 20 seconds combined throughout the out of your entire day, 20 seconds, you've consumed 500 calories or more. You know, you're cooking something, and Julie would say that she would make things for her her daughter or make things for her husband that she wasn't going to eat, and she would take a spoonful to taste it. Well, if you do it with some Alfredo sauce or if you make an avocado and just take a spoonful, I mean, you're talking about things that are that are um, very calorie dense. Now, you can do that throughout the day and take a bite here and a little piece there and hundreds and hundreds of calories. And then you look back and say, well, I only had 1,500 calories today and I burned 2,000. How come I'm not losing any weight? That's what I have on a daily, on an average. Well, it's because you're not counting those five or 600 calories that you're taking in. So you have to track every single bite. And if I go into the kitchen now, then today I went in and I was going to... I think I was going to have, oh, I was breaking up bananas. And if you want to learn how to uh, peel a banana, then click on this video here. I show you how to properly peel a banana with no mess, no stress, and no fuss. So anyway, I was breaking up the banana to freeze it to make my ice cream. Yes, I'll plug all my videos then. Here you go. Click here and you'll learn how to make ice cream, homemade ice cream out of bananas. Very healthy. So, and I was going to take a chunk about this big. Now that's probably about 35 calories, something like that. And I said, you know what, I'm going to have to clean my hands again, grab my phone, sit there, hold this thing up, take a picture of it, then text her and send her the picture, then put my phone up just to eat that one little bite. Okay, really, it's not worth it. So I just didn't do it. Same thing if I'm using shredded cheese for something. I'll go to put the shredded cheese on and then want to just grab a little bit like like it's chewing tobacco or something like, you know, just stick it up here. Won't do it. So that's one way I'm tracking my snacking. But of course, if I was to do that, I would either ha I would have to both take the picture and then weigh it and, and give an approximation at least if, um, if I can't weigh it. If I'm not, you know, at home with my scale. So anyway, that's why I think it's important to measure your food. And to weigh your food because you have to be precise. Um, it's You want to use multiples because if you're using software, it may not give you every option. So you want to try to use multiples of the serving size. And you want to try to, um, you want to, you have to track everything that you take in so that you can be precise. The reason why you want to do this is because you want to be able to look back on your week, on your month, whatever um, length of time you're using. And you want to be able to say, well, this is exactly what I did. And here are the results. If I want greater results, then I need to change something in what I did. If I love these results, then I need to duplicate it. And so either way, I have to track everything so I can duplicate it or I can manipulate it. So there you have it. That's why you should measure your, measure your food, hopefully according to the serving size or multiple of, so it will be easy for you. You want to weigh your food so you can be accurate, realizing that a serving size based on volume is not going to be accurate, as accurate as weight. And you want to track your food so that you will be able to evaluate what you've done and to uh, change, make any changes that are necessary. Alright guys, hope this has been somewhat helpful. Hope I didn't just ramble on and talk nonsense, but at least you got to click a couple banana videos, right, and watch that. So hopefully it was worth it. Till the next time.